Welcome to Study With The Best, the magazine show about CUNY. I'm Duane. And I'm Vespina. The College Discovery Program at the CUNY Community Colleges not only helps academically and financially disadvantaged students graduate, but also teaches them the tools to thrive in life. On this edition of Study With The Best, we'll visit Shivani Subrayan, a counselor at the College Discovery Program at LaGuardia Community College, who shows us how students are getting the academic and counseling services they'll need to succeed. And we'll visit the new media lab at the CUNY Graduate Center, where students are conceiving and creating groundbreaking multimedia projects. And Barry Mitchell with a Kingsborough Community College alumna who's into rock. Only these rocks are four and a half billion years old. So stay tuned. For many students, going to college is an unattainable goal, either because they didn't have the money or they weren't prepared academically. This is where the College Discovery Program at CUNY's Community Colleges comes in. Besides financial aid, College Discovery provides the specialized academic and counseling services needed to help these students thrive in college. CUNY's four-year colleges have a similar program called SEEK. The director of the College Discovery Program at LaGuardia Community College says that the counselors go the extra 10 miles for the students. Here's an example with counselor and CUNY graduate Shivani Sabrian and her students. So how do you think the class went, David? I think it went great. I think the students took a lot away from it. I wasn't very outspoken, I was very shy, and very nonchalant about my education. So Shivani took the initiative and, and reached out to me to make me this person that she knew I was capable of being from the beginning. David was a student my freshman summer in our class. He started from having very low self-esteem. He did not speak often. He was very hesitant to take chances. In high school, I was a very um, unmotivated person. I surrounded myself with the wrong type of people because that was the environment I was in. Later in the semester, I started to talk about patterns in college enrollment and um, larger numbers of female students are coming to college and that minority males have less positive role models as opposed to minority females. And he was in the class. And I think at that point, there was like a lightning bolt that struck him. And I saw him nodding in class. She's grown me. <laughs> she has watered and, and planted and shined sunlight on me. It, it took seven to eight weeks, but he opened up and gradually I saw the behavior change in the second semester, attending class on time, um, participating, and he came in for his advisement appointment. I said, I think you'd be an excellent candidate for the peer partner program because you bring a different perspective into the classroom. So I want you to keep this as a framework because we're going to come back to it. And um, then we're going to have Davin take over from here, pair partner, to lead an exercise in what we call the diversity shuffle. So to begin the exercise, ready? Ready? Okay. So, please take a step forward if you are a woman. It makes me feel great. It's indescribable how I feel. I feel like I'm on top of the world when I help these people because it's like, you're coming to me? Out of all people? You know, I think it would be really beneficial if we do this exercise more towards the beginning of the term as like an icebreaker exercise so that the students get to know other people in their class. Working with a student and getting familiar with the background, I think that's really what distinguishes the CD and SEEK programs and having a counseling background because you realize it's not only about getting that 4.0 and that's the inspiration. When I first entered College Discovery, oh my God, I was a little, um, I guess, standoffish, I think it's the word. Um, I was a little angry and not confused, not sure if it was for me. I was around a whole bunch of young kids and I couldn't identify too much. But um, as the time went on, it was very informative. Um, I had a great counselor, a great teacher, and um, she met me where I was at. And for them, life is an inspiration. They bring so many components of their identity into college. Life is crazy. It's funny because um, at one point, I wanted to be Scarface. You know, I got the movie in my house, but I no longer want to be Scarface. You know, but now my life has changed where I want to be a respectful, productive member of society and a, 
I'm a successful businessman. College is, is it, it, it signi signifies so much more for them, I think, more than the degree, more than the GP. It, it's like overcoming adversity, overcoming obstacles, proving something to themselves, proving themselves to their family. I got a 12 and a 15 year old, and it's for them that um, I wanted to come back to school for, because I wanted to show them that, um, you know, I can't tell them to go to college, and I, and I didn't have a GED. Now I got a GED and I'm in college. I hopefully have a degree in a couple of years, a year and a half. And um, I want to be proud to, to, to say I'm their father. I didn't want it to be ashamed. So that's why I'm in school and I changed my life around for them to um, lift their head high when somebody asks me I'm their father. Something as small as somebody commented on one of my pit her pictures and told them that I look like, she looks like me. And I would expect her to be like, ooh, like, ew. And she said, oh, thanks. And that got me so, like, I felt like a sucker, like I got emotional. You know, something as small as that. When they came in, they were very passive students. They thought college meant coming to class and going home. And we said, no, it's more than that. It's doing an internship, participating in our clubs, coming to our events. This is a community of learners, and that's what we really want to emphasize. I had dropped out of high school when I was um, 16 to have my child who's two years old now. And so I was 17 years old when I came to LaGuardia and I was very lost in the mix where I didn't know what to expect. I had all these things going on in my life. I had a newborn baby. So the College Discovery Program kind of gave me that confidence that I needed to just put one foot in front of the other and continue going and just find all the opportunities that I possibly could and take advantage of them and use my college experience to the fullest and now I'm doing what I've always dreamed of doing. And here are opportunities, they're yours if you go out and grab them and we believe in you so you can do it. My name is Jerry Kulumbis. I go to Queensboro Community College. I'm a health science major. My biggest fear is failure. I come from a family that really depends on my success. They didn't have the opportunities that I have in this country. So it would be a personal failure to not achieve an MD or be a doctor, or be successful, especially in the eyes of my parents who provide me so much. When I left high school, I had a uh, regular Regents diploma. I didn't study. I got lost in being an adolescent. In Queensboro Community College, I'm achieving more than I thought I would. I'm getting higher. You know, the things I do there, the places I go with my research, I didn't think I would be able to do this in high school at all. In order to succeed in this country, you have all the opportunity available to you, no matter who you are and what you stand for. There's no excuse to sit down and say, I can't anymore. People have been in worse predicaments, and they've achieved. Have a commitment towards your goal. Commit to it with all your effort and responsibility. Have some fun on the side, but commit because it will pay off in the end. It will pay off and you appreciate every second of it. That's me, that's CUNY. At the Graduate Center's New Media Lab, doctoral students and faculty from a variety of disciplines come together to develop multimedia projects that combine academic research and digital technology in trailblazing ways. In this segment, we meet Managing Director Andrea Adez Vasquez and three students of the lab who invite us to see the latest breakthroughs in scholarship and pedagogy. My name is Andrea Addis Vasquez. I'm the managing director of the Graduate Center's New Media Lab. The lab is a place where doctoral students and faculty come when they're involved in using new media, new technologies in their academic work. We're under the direction of the Center for Media and Learning and the American Social History Project, where we're all involved in using new technologies. 
students will contact me with a short proposal and a work plan for doing something that's related to their research. We've had students in art history, history, physics, psychology, environmental psychology, music composition, English, computer science, sociology, political science, Hispanic literature, and theater. And I'm probably forgetting a few. Before Lynn starts, let me quickly run through who, who else will be around. The last meeting, Callan Sakalis was here. She's an environmental psych. And I realize we're now up to about nine students in environmental psychology because we've done work at the lab. We have general meetings about every month or so, and students share their projects. We kind of go around the room, and people give little overviews of what they're doing. New students come in and present what they envision happening at the lab for themselves. And they get advice that they wouldn't have gotten in their own department, because they're really talking to a range of people. My name is Zachary Seldes. I am a composer. I'm in the PhD uh, music composition program here at the Grad Center. Generally, what I've been doing here for the past few years is working with 3D game space to construct interactive sound pieces for multiple people, whether they're in Korea or Europe or the US, they can all go into the same virtual space and experience and interact uh, with a sonic world. I've always, as a composer, wanted to write music for space, where in order to experience the music, you had to move through space rather than sit passively in an audience. And I've never really had the resources or the expertise to do it. The New Media Lab gave me the opportunity to learn the skills required and gave me the time and the place to, to do those things. So um, I have a prototype. So let me just move around a little bit. So in terms of sound, some of the things that I'm exploring are whether a sound sounds intentional or non-intentional, or uh, another sense, you have a bunch of objects making sound by themselves, don't do much, but together they, they sound expressive like a chamber group. So I'll, that's kind of sonically what I'm interested in in space. I'm also using that same approach to game space for pedagogical purposes. I'm building a 3D virtual orchestra inside a networked game space, and my students can drop into that space together or alone and explore the instruments without any rules. The only assignment being just do what you want, pick up the trombone and move it next to the violin, and hopefully by making it fun and active, uh, make the process more successful. tell people we're not a drop-in facility. We're not AV and we don't have an on-staff person to do any of the work for you. You need to learn the software you need to know to do a project and we believe this is really important for graduate students. They should come out familiar with emerging technologies. Important for their own research and for their teaching. Students here have used everything from cell phones to blogs to online databases and journals, sound environments using 3D gaming engines, mapping software, open source timelines to organize research, flash animation, other visualizing software, a range of open source tools for creating blogs, websites. My name is Marcos Basem. I'm a student at the PhD program in Hispanic and Luso Brazilian literatures and languages. And what I'm doing here is a project on poetry in new media, basically. Uh, the project itself is a way to showcase different poetics work done in new media and also bring them together with criticism through uh, the use of Open Journal System, which is a software that allows you to create a collaborative environment of people that can contribute. I'm trying to create a sort of academic community this first issue I created on Luis Bravo. He published this book in Montevideo in 1998 as a CD-ROM, and he placed there a series of videos which I showcase here. There's an article by Jill Kanheim from the University of Kansas that wrote on Luis Bravo's work, and I feature it. <laughs> Most of my dissertation has to do with historic aspects of uh, 
poetic creation and cultural circulation at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. When, for example, photography was a new thing, how the technological novelty affected creation at that time. The things I'm showcasing here are more recent. They developed since the appearance of, well, computers, internet. It's a way for me to think on, on uh, my dissertation from a different point of view. What's unique about this space is it's a place to come to be a part of a community of folks who are grappling with new media, new technologies in all kinds of ways. It's cross-discipline, so people need to learn how to talk to people in other disciplines, get their idea across, um, learn how people in other disciplines are using the same piece of software they're using. Um, sometimes there have been great connections, great networking has happened at the lab because of this. My name is Shondell Fraser and I'm in the environmental psychology program here. I'm a second year PhD student. I'm looking at the myths of nature that exist in National Geographic car ads. So specifically National Geographic because it has a very specific uh, place in our society as describing what culture looks like and where it is. And then the same thing with nature. So my work here with the New Media Lab, essentially I'm like thinking about ways to present this information, thinking about ways of engaging folks in conversation where they are, just how National Geographic makes it to everyone's homes. I want to use technology that you can similarly make it into people's homes. So one of the things I'm looking at is a mind mapping software called Personal Brain. Someone would actually be able to look at these ideas and say, oh, you know what, you know, car ad pictures, what is that about? So this has a link to my blog. So this is a blog that's actually hosted free on opencuny.org. Lots of free resources here at CUNY. So this is a dippity timeline. It shows a, a linear progression of what we know to be environmentalism here in America, uh, car culture, how it developed, and those two things are actually married very closely. And then of course the ads themselves are placed on there so we can see how the images change over time in relation to these two things. So the New Media Lab has been a help, I think just because it's a free-form space. We have very little pressure put on us for what it is we're expected to produce, whereas in our individual disciplines there's certainly an idea for what a dissertation looks like and what's the timeline. Uh, it's a good environment to discuss lots of issues. The interesting thing is that we can share the problems that those new formats and new ways of communication are causing for our own research. For me, it's a really rich experience. So, you know, we've got a wide range of disciplines all converging in a few rooms and talking to, to each other and helping each other. So um, this is really a great place and it's the reason why uh, my project is possible. Not only must we stop torture, including sexualized torture, we also need unconditionally to ratify many human rights treaties, including CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Economic and social rights need to be bedrock federal policy, including universal, non-discriminatory federal policy from which reproductive health care and abortion cannot be validly excised. I'll never give up on that one. I've been privileged for almost 40 years to be part of the process toward a gendered universalization of human rights here and abroad. I am grateful to everyone who has made this possible, both politically and personally, and to those who carry it on. Thank you so much. The student-mentor relationship is a special one. Luke Skywalker had Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Kingsborough Community College professor Dr. Harold Connolly and honor student Marsha Allen 
have had their share of interplanetary adventures. Our producer, Barry Mitchell, thinks it has to be the makings of a major motion picture. She worked in telecommunications. She was a fashion model before coming to America. And at CUNY, she graduated with honors. But today, Marsha Allen is about to take the ride of her life. Marsha, I told you we wouldn't need these guns. There's no such thing as aliens. I, I don't know why we brought these things. It's ridiculous. What? Oh! You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension of higher education. You've just crossed over into the CUNY zone. Thank you very much, thank you. Well, hello, I'm Dr. Harold Connolly. I'm a professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at Kingsborough Community College in the Graduate Center of City University of New York. Are you ready to fly to Mars? We are. Enjoy your flight. You know, I teach astronomy and geology and have students from all over the face of the Earth. Hi, my name is Marsha Allen. I am originally from the island of Trinidad and Tobago, and I studied at Kingsborough Community College. I graduated at the top of my class in 2007. The last summer I had the opportunity to study, study with Dr. Connor Lee at the Museum of Natural History. And she presented her research that she did with me on the first materials to form in the solar system at the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in Houston, Texas in March of 2010. Close call. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, going to the upper atmosphere here. Look at it. Thank you. This is my goodness. We're going to get some meteorites for the, for the CUNY collection. <laughs> Look, we're fine. We're in good shape. No radiation. Here we are, arrivals at Mars. I need him for the Mars project. Why well, study meteorites? First of all, one reason to study meteorites for me is because it's my passion. It gives us a real insight into understanding the basic formation of planets and how they evolve over time. So here we have in front of us, Marcia, a meteorite from the asteroid belt that landed in Africa and was recovered in Africa. And it is, as you know, uh, one of the oldest rocks in the solar system. I'm going to open it up now, take it out carefully. Mm. And what are those white things there, Marcia? Those white things are calcium aluminum inclusions. They're basically 4.5 billion years old. And they are the very first? Rocks to form in our solar system. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this rock is the rocky material from which this planet Earth, also Mars, Venus, and Mercury, are made from. Yes. This is the leftover debris that they did not get formed into a planet. Fortunately for us, we have it to study. Very cool stuff. Yeah, exactly, yes. And now it's time to know no, your, your space, space debris. The asteroid is, is an object that is in space that's, that's anywhere from Volkswagen size to 1,000 kilometers in diameter. Uh, a meteorite is a piece of an asteroid that you pick off the ground here on Earth or on some other planet, okay, like Mars and, or even a satellite like the Moon. A meteor is, is, is a meteorite that's traveling through the atmosphere of a planet. And comets are perhaps one of the most primitive materials that we have. They're a combination of rock and ice and travel into the inner solar system and uh, basically start to lose their ice as they travel. The Earth was, was formed by essentially the collision of asteroids, rocky material, about 4.567 billion years ago, uh, and approximately 30 million years after it was formed, it encountered a collision with a Mars-like object, we believe at this point, that formed the Earth-Moon system. So the Moon is actually formed from this collision event of the, of the Mars-like body with the Earth. 65 million years ago, a giant impact basically whacked the dinosaur. Helped ex the dinosaurs to go extinct. Uh, and so it does happen in geologic time. Typically in my lectures, I tell most students that there's probably no chance of stopping a large asteroid hitting the Earth. So you can basically kiss your butt goodbye. CUNY is where I met my second family. The professors there inspired me because I think my success was actually their success. My main teaching goal is to teach non-majors about science and stimulate them to realize why is science so important. Not just meteorite science, but science in general, because you use it in your everyday life and most people don't even know they use it. 23 campuses, a stellar faculty, and the decade of science. That's life in the CUNY zone. Come to CUNY, see the universe.
Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, remember to study. Study with the best.